So now what we're going to be doing, um, our next assignment is we're going to start rigging. So our first thing that we did, our first couple assignments were all animation based. Um, the Game of Thrones one, uh, we animated it, but if you remember, it had all those circles, so it was rigged. And purposefully, it was rigged pretty horribly where we couldn't see exactly what was happening. Um, the um, stick animation after that was rigged much better. We had actual controls that directed us as to what each thing would do. Ideally, when you rig something, that's what you want to do is give uh, specific indicators as to what a control is going to do. And then the bouncing ball we just created from scratch and animated it along the way. We could have, in the first part of that, gone through and actually rigged the bouncing ball, but it wasn't necessary for that kind of thing. Um, just for fun, oops, ball rig Maya. Um, they do have a ball rig Maya and a ball rig for Maya, and it allows you to do um, a lot of things that we were already doing, but in a much quicker fashion. Okay, so some things like it hitting the ground, it, it's like built in. I don't know if this is the same rig, but in the one rig I saw, it was built in. So anytime the ball did come near the ground, it actually would like squash and stretch out. And then as you lifted it up, then it would go back to normal shape and you could stretch it out. Okay. Let's see, roll it, whatever. There's. And this one, he's grabbing just the top of it and he's able to stretch it. So this is not the same one that I saw before. And there's the bottom. But you'll see how it's doing both of those actions. It's not just like pushing it in. It's actually pushing it and scaling it out. Okay. Anytime you look at rigging, you have to figure out, number one, what do I want to animate? And then number two, how do I do that? Okay. So in this case, in the ball rig, he knows he's going to need squash and stretch. He's going to need rotation. He's going to need movement. Okay. Um, you going back and creating a rig for a ball now would be much easier than if you had no idea how to animate a ball because you've had some experience animating a ball so you know these are the controls that I most likely would need. Um, you'll know what things relate to each other um, and so on. Okay, So uh, this is an example of a student's work last time. So what we're going to be rigging is this like Pokemon ball thing. It has a helicopter, it has some arms on it, and it has a lens. So, um, I should probably preface this with what the assignment is. We're rigging it, and then your animation that you create for it is just showing off the controls. So, like we talked about going beyond things, he went beyond and made this whole little scene kind of showing off the stuff. That was his countdown. <laughs> and it goes away. All right, so that was one of them. Let's see, this one. Uh, that one should be playing. Why aren't you playing? Open with DLC. Countdown. Ready. There it goes. Another one. Come on, close. Um, do I have his in here? Oh, he doesn't. So you get the idea. We're going to make sure that we can control this uh, creature, dude, guy. Okay. Um, all the videos for this one are up on Canvas under the iMech rig. That's what I'm calling it for copyright reasons. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, here is the actual startup file you'll use. So that is the character. When I created him, I put him in this kind of position. So his arms are out. And the reason I did that is so that it's easier for you to see all the controls. If I had him bunched up and everything closed up, you wouldn't be able to grab anything to move it correctly. Okay, So purposefully, all of this stuff is out the way it should be. 
you'll see this is only like two videos. That's all it takes. Okay, it's not an extensive like crazy amount of rigging um, done on this one. Um, this is hard surface rigging versus organic rigging. Okay, so if I'm doing a person, <laughs> uh, if I was doing a person, that would be organic rigging. That's something completely different. That will be our next assignment. So we're gonna do one hard surface, one organic. That way you have a little bit of experience in both, seeing how each one of those would work. Um, some of the controls will travel between each one of those things, okay? So if you haven't noticed this, there's a rigging menu under Maya. Um, and inside here is some of the stuff that we're gonna be using, not all of it. The more you get into rigging, the more tools you'll eventually start to use, okay? So I'm gonna show um, up here just a little quick um, example of how things get rigged, okay? So here's a cylinder. And I'm just gonna duplicate it. Oops. And I'll put it down here. I'm gonna duplicate this, I'm gonna shrink it. And then I'm gonna duplicate this. And what? Perfect. Okay. And then I'm just gonna create some spheres and just drop them into some spots. So this is the uh, the most primitive arm you'll ever see. Um, <laughs> if we needed to animate this arm, we have to um, realize the limitations of just going straight at it and trying to animate, okay? So some people in the past, I'm not gonna name any names, but they've taken my rig and they said, well, I'm not gonna rig it, I'm just gonna animate it. And it turns out horribly because they haven't rigged it. They haven't set it up correctly. So basically what they would do is they would just grab everything and they would set a key and then they would move up and say, well, now I want the arm to be bent. So then they would just grab stuff and then go like this and then just move things up and do that. And do that. And do that. And then do that. This should be pretty hilarious when it actually like plays. Okay, so let's pretend that that works. All right, grab everything again, set a key. Okay. So now the animation from here to there, it looks like it's actually kind of working, but you'll see that like the fingers have now gotten shorter. The elbow is kind of sticking out. Uh, if I need to switch anything, it's gonna be a huge hassle trying to do it. If I need to tweak anything, um, look at my keys and my uh, graph editor. Okay, all those keyframes in order to make that happen, that we shouldn't have that. In order for me to move the arm like that, I want one control that allows me to just grab it and move it where I want it to be, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna delete those keyframes, like so, okay. All right, so I'm gonna create what's called uh, joints, okay? So think of joints just like the joints in your body. So my shoulder is a shoulder joint, my elbow is an elbow joint, my wrist is a wrist joint, each one of my fingers have knuckle joints right inside there, okay? So that's what we wanna think of. Um, the thing between each joint is a bone. So you'll see all of that stuff when I start creating these. So I'm gonna go to create joints. Anytime I draw joints, I'm in the front view, I'm in the side view, or I'm in the top view. Do not be in perspective view because it will not turn out well. So I'm gonna go to my side view and I just put a joint here for the shoulder a joint there for the elbow. Oops, let me switch my colors here so you can see this a little bit better. That didn't really help at all, did it? Nope. All right, give me one second, let me just change the wireframe color. It's a good time to go over how to change wireframe color. <laughs> Grab stuff, add it to a layer, and then you can just double click the layer and choose a different color. So maybe that? Yep, that should work, okay. I'll go back to my skeleton, back to create joints. I'll throw an elbow joint or a shoulder joint, elbow joint. Here is the wrist, here is the palm. And then I need one for each finger. 
okay? So I have to go to the base of the finger and then to the tip. Now, to continue this joint back at the wrist, I hit the up arrow. Now it's back at the base of the finger. I need to go back one more. Now it's at the wrist. So now I can go base of the finger, tip of the finger. Hit the up arrow twice, base of the finger, tip of the finger. Okay. And then I just hit enter and go back to my move tool. All right, so if I look at just this, let me just um, isolate it. That's what I've just set up here. Now, if you were to look at the structure of a skeleton, like an actual human skeleton, you would see something very similar to that because that's how they work. Um, as a rigger, typically you would study how something works mechanically, even the human body, and you would want to apply that same concept to the actual rig itself, okay? Or to the model itself. Um, so in this case, uh, I need to know where the shoulder is, where the elbow is, where the wrist is, where this is, and all that. Now, if this was a realistic human, like an organic human, this would be much more involved, okay? My finger would not have a joint here and a joint there. It would have these joints in the middle allowing me to bend it. My character cannot bend his fingers. They're solid one-piece things, so he'll just be able to do that, okay? Um, also, on our our arms, we have two bones that are inside here, right? The radius and the ulna, if you remember that. And as this is connected to the wrist, this is connected to the elbow, they like cross over each other. So that's a whole different kind of setup for a rig, okay? But stuff that you have to know if you're gonna be um, animating that, all right. So now I have this. Now this does nothing right now. All it does is create a structure for me to then attach my geometry to, okay? So if this was a organic shape, like a human arm or a um, 3D arm, um, I would do what's called skinning to it. Basically, I'm taking my geometry and I'm saying when the bones move and the joints move, you're going to move. Uh, because these are hard surfaces and I don't want any squashing or stretching or any of that, all I have to do is parent, okay? So parenting is like something that we've already um, kind of done before. So I'm gonna grab my joint here or my geometry um, oops. I need to make sure that I don't have any keyframes on this. So somehow I undid and I still have keyframes. I just delete these. There you go. All right. So I'm going to grab my geometry. I'm going to shift click the joint and then I'm going to hit P. Okay. Uh, I'm going to grab the geometry. I'm going to shift click the joint and hit P. Now, when we get into something like an elbow, you have to think about how does this thing move? What item does it move with? Okay, and that's what it should get parented to. So, in this spot, I have a joint right there. So, I could parent it to this joint, or I could parent it to that joint. Okay, so that's kind of like it's in between two different joints. Uh, if I wanted it to rotate every time I rotated my robot's arm, I would parent it to this guy here. If I didn't want it to rotate, I would parent it to this top piece right there. Okay, and I'll show you that in a second when we're all done. So this one I'm just going to parent to that. This I'm going to parent to that. Oops. And if you remember from day two, we talked about... Um, selection priority if i were to marquee everything in my scene joints have a higher selection priority than everything else that's currently in my scene so what that means is if i go like this i'm grabbing joints you'll see that the geometry is highlighted but it's basically just because they're parented to the joints that they're getting selected so just be aware of that so i grab this i click that i hit p i grab this piece of geometry shift click that joint hit p geometry joint so now what should happen is if I click on this shoulder and I move it, everything should move. And it does. So I'm awesome. Cool. Um, so now what I want to do is actually animate it. So there's two kinds of ways that we could um, further rig this in order to animate it. One way is FK. If you remember from the videos that we watched about the... Um, did we talk about FK? I think he did. I think he mentioned something about it. I mentioned, I remember something with that. Anyway, if he didn't, it doesn't matter. It's still important to us now. So FK 
we start here at the shoulder, then we go to the elbow, then we go to the wrist, and then we go to each finger. So think of someone who is doing a um, uh, one of those clay sculpture puppet things, and they're moving them around like claymation. They start at the shoulder, and they rotate. Then they go to the forearm, and they rotate. Then they go to the wrist, and they rotate. Okay, That's how forward kinematics works. You start at the top, and you work your way down. If I was going to do something to this guy, I would grab the shoulder, and I would not move. I would rotate. And then I would grab the forearm, and I would rotate. Then I would grab the wrist, and I would rotate. Okay, that's forward kinematics. If I'm doing inverse kinematics, I'm going to create a controller that allows me to grab at the wrist and just move the hand where I want the hand to be. Okay, so I'm going to go to skeleton. I'm going to go to create IK handle tool. Um, I believe the defaults are all good. Yes, they haven't changed that yet. Uh, I grab the two spots. So the shoulder is the start of it. The end of it is the wrist. So I click on the wrist. Okay. So now I have inside here this little um, orange. Again, let me choose a different color so you can see it. Little orange uh, line. Now, if I marquee, do you see what my selection priority is now? Right? It's that little handle. My joints aren't selected. My geometry isn't selected. That little handle now has selection priority. Okay, again, something important because when you're trying to grab what you want to grab, it'll always get in the way. All right, so now as I move this, look at how the hand is able to update the elbow and update the forearm and the shoulder all in one. Okay, so for certain things, this makes a whole lot of sense. This makes our animation process a lot easier because we're not dealing with this item and this item and then this item we're dealing with one item we can just grab and move around, okay? Now where this, where this area fails is if I wanted to create an animation of my arm swinging, it's very difficult to do, okay? So for me to create an animation of my arm swinging like this, look at all the values that are moving over there in my channel box, okay? So for some animations, you will use forward kinematics in the future, not right now. In some animations, you will use inverse kinematics Okay, for our little robot uh, helicopter guy, we are using inverse kinematics for the arms. Okay, because we want to be able to grab them and move them around. For the fingers, we're using forward kinematics. Okay, meaning that we're able to grab the fingers and rotate them to where we need them to be. Right, so it's a mix of them on each model. The later models that we're going to be using, the characters, they already have stuff built in. So we will not be rigging a full-blown human character or whatever, a biped character. We are baby-stepping this. Okay, so you're going to do some basic rigging, and then you'll see what a good professional rig is supposed to look like. Okay, when we get into those later steps. All right. Um, so if I want to move the hand or the arm, I can use this IK handle. If I want to uh, move the fingers, I can grab the fingers and simply just rotate them. Okay. Now this process is a bit tedious, right? Like that sucks having to grab each finger and rotate it. Um, so this is where the other part of rigging comes in. <clears throat> All right. Um, you'll see this in the video too. Um, IK handles are kind of crappy in the fact that every time I create them, they have controls here. Right? So you can see how I have, not controls, they have values, two, five, and seven. We always want to be able to reset our rig to get them back to where we originally started. Okay? So unless you have a photographic memory or you want to write down every value that your IK handle has, if I accidentally went like this, the only way for me to get that back is to type in those values. Okay? Um, even freeze transforming, because that's what you might be thinking. If I freeze transform and this puts it at zero, uh, you'll see that they're like negative zeros and my hand is actually kind of like off to the side, which is weird. Okay. Uh, I may not have gone back far enough anyway, but there it is. Try that again, freeze transform. Hmm. That may have actually worked, holy cow. That's something that never worked before. All right, well, whatever. You're still gonna do it the way in the video. <laughs> All right, the way in the video is better anyway. 
all right because it allows for other stuff modifications all right so good um, so what I want to do is create a controller that allows me to then take the fingers and move them around ideally what I want to do is I want to have one controller that I can move the arm and control the fingers at the same time okay without having to do this and then grab each finger and then rotate each finger okay and just like we talked about with the um, uh, stick animation there are sometimes we uh, controls we want our character animators not to be able to do right so like your fingers most fingers can't spin around like that like on their own right you can't just like twist your finger so it would make sense on these rigs that our characters cannot spin their fingers around like that to a point they shouldn't be able to do that either right a little bit sure but not like crazy um, so this is getting into the second level of rigging so this is just like the main part where we're creating controls for these major areas of our body so things like your arms your legs um, your hips spine now we're getting into more of the fine detail of making the fingers um, being able to rotate okay so you don't have to pay attention to exactly what I'm doing at this moment because again it'll be in the video and it's more complex than I want to uh, get into in this demo okay but essentially what I'm doing is grouping that IK to itself left I don't know if it's left hand but it looks like a left hand there we go calling it the left hand IK I'm gonna go to uh, modify display oops display transform display selection handles there we go Okay, and then I'm gonna hide my key handle because I don't need it. Okay, cool. All right, so now I have this controller here. Now this is just a a simple little plus sign thing um, that allows me to very quickly grab this and move it. And like I said before, I want to be able to reset this back to zero, and it goes back to zero. Um, that's what I want to be able to do, and it works perfect. Uh, but I still need to be able to have some sort of controller that makes sense. Okay, so under create under text type whatever it's called um, where are you at right there Oops. Um, I'm going to create some type now I want to create some symbols that will help me um, make controls that will make it obvious of what this this thing is doing okay so you can go into Illustrator and you can draw paths in Illustrator save it as an illustrator 8 file and then you can just go to create illustrator object and just bring in the curves and it'll actually export the curves from illustrator the past illustrator and bring them into maya okay so that's a super easy way to be able to do that even though it sounds like a lot of steps it's much easier uh, if you don't want to do that and you want to rely on whatever is inside of a font you can use character map i don't think a mac has anything like this maybe font book would be the closest thing you can search through it um, but this allows you to go through and see exactly like every single character in every font. The reason I want to do that is because I want to find something that is close enough to what I want to use as my controller. That's all I'm doing. So in this case, let's say I'm going to use this arrow. I say select, I say copy, and then I paste that in here and now I get the arrow. Okay, so it's a very quick way just to get that exact shape. Oop, that works for any of the character set stuff. So character map find your picture select copy and then you just control V to paste it here okay um, so now I have a piece of geometry typically for our controls we don't like pieces of geometry because when we click the render button what's gonna happen to it um, it is gonna show up if I have a light in the scene <laughs> right so we don't want um, lights or we don't want um, objects in our scene so I'm gonna make curves from the type there it is and then I can just delete the history delete that piece of geometry and now I have that shape okay so now I'm just gonna use this as my controller for that hand uh, I'm gonna center pivot it I'm going to snap it to where the wrist is by holding down V and middle clicking and dragging there we go oops you're so close there you go all right that works there maybe I'll even pull this off that way people know what it's doing it's doing I'll still put the pivot here I'll try to put the pivot there get in there um, 
show geometry or show polygons that hides all the geometry and that way I can just snap it right to that spot perfect show polygons again good all right so now when I marquee this it selects that thing that's what I wanted okay so now I can freeze a transform on this take this handle shift click this and parent it so now I grab this and it grabs this thing to let me move it that's much more handy than trying to grab that thing okay Plus, it allows me to see exactly where that's controlling. It's controlling that hand. Um, I can also hide this thing. I'm done with that. Cool. Awesome. All right. So now I'm going to create some controls so that I can move the fingers individually. Okay. So I can marquee this, move it around, and then move the fingers too. So under modify, there is an add attribute. I can make my own attributes. Translates, rotates, scales, visibility are attributes I can make my own. Um, if you remember from the Game of Thrones one, all those controls that were on the side, those are ones that I made personally. Um, I'm going to call this left, uh, or I'll just call this index. Let's call it. It's a left hand. I already gave it that, so I'll call it left index. Um, that's fine. Um, these are the different kinds of numbers that it's going to create okay so this is adding an attribute so it wants to know what kind of attribute is it um, a float means any number at all so negative positive decimal point anything a vector is a three digit number so like x y and z all bunched together we don't want that integer is a whole number so one two three four five no decimal we don't want that boolean is on or off so like visibility we don't want that um, these two are just other stuff so we want float. Most of the stuff we're doing is going to be float. So just leave it there. Uh, minimums and maximums. So how far is this finger going to be able to bend? Okay. So if right now um, the finger is in this position and I say I want it to be able to bend all the way like this, typically 10 is a good value to go with. Okay. Um, if I want it to go backwards, I may also want to put a value in for that too. So I'm going to put 10 for the bend forward and negative 10 for the bend backwards, okay? So that was left index, this is left middle. Left. I'm gonna call that pinky. I don't know what it would be. Uh, negative 10, 10, zero, cool. Okay, so now I have left index, left middle, and left pinky over here. They don't do anything. They're just blank attributes right now. That's all they are. Okay. If I were to just like before click on them, middle drag, it does nothing. Okay. Uh, I actually have to link it to these things. So uh, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to. Oh, I didn't click the attribute. Uh, I want to rotate it in Y. So now I go to edit and I say set driven key. Okay. Uh, this is probably going to be the most confusing controller, but also the best controller. Okay. Because what it allows us to do is create custom uh, attributes for whatever we want. Okay. So all the stuff that I created inside of that Game of Thrones one was done with the set driven key. Once you understand it, it's 10 times easier than anything else that I'm going to show you. All right. Um, so the top part is the driver. This is what is controlling stuff. Okay. So of these two objects, what is controlling what? This thing here. This here. Yep. That's right. Okay. So this triangle is going to control the finger, right? So the mm -hmm. triangle is going to be the driver. Okay, and we should actually call this something so that makes more sense. Left wrist controller. I'm gonna load the driver again. There we go. Okay, and then what's gonna be the driven object? The, the finger. Yep. All right. So now the finger will be that. And again, it helps to label stuff. Uh, left index. There's only one of them, but I'll just call it base anyway. 
Um, so now it needs to know what is going to control what. What attributes am I linking together? So I'm going to link the left index here to the rotate Y here. Okay, so those two items are going to be connected together. So now it becomes more of just like animation. Okay, so if I click on this, click back on that, left index is zero. So when left index is at zero, this is what I want that to look like. Okay, just standard position. So I set a key. When left index is at 10, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to rotate it to what I want to look like when it's at 10. Now again, it looks ridiculous because it's just like a solid finger, but just ignore that. Okay, so I hit key again. Now there's no keys being set down here. All the keys are being set on that finger itself to be controlled by that other object. All right. So I'm going to grab this other object and set this to negative 10 and then rotate this back what I want to look like at negative 10. Maybe like that. Key. Okay. So now I have stuff connected to left mid left index. So as I drag this, now you can see how that finger is now able to move. Okay. Um, now I'll do it to the middle. So I go to left middle here. I click this, oops, that, load driven. Again, I should name these things. The hardest part people have um, doing this is making sure they've clicked and loaded the right things, okay? So every single time I have to make sure that this is in my driver because that's what's gonna be controlling stuff. And then whatever's in the driven corresponds to what I'm doing. So left middle, left middle, rotate Y. Okay, you can see what I have selected. I set a key. I change this arrow to negative 10. I go to this finger. This is what negative 10 is supposed to look like. I grab this. I set it to positive 10. I grab that. Now I didn't select the joint. Okay, if you look at it, you'll see the joint is not highlighted. The joint is still purple, meaning I didn't click it. So that's where you have to be careful. So now I click it, you see the whole thing lights up green. Now I can rotate. Set a key there. So now we have left middle. We have left index. Okay, and then I will have left pinky. Oops. Again, I didn't click it. Left uh, pinky base. Rotate Y, left pinky, set a key. And notice the order too that I'm setting this in. I set this one first, then I set that one. So I set my controller first at negative 10. Then I go here and tell it what I want to look like at negative 10. And then I set a key. I set this to positive 10, punch in what I want this to look like at positive 10. And then I set a key. Okay, so now if we look at this, oh, they're actually pretty close to where they should be. I can move all those fingers around. Okay, now again, what's cool about that is I've created controllers for each one of those fingers. If I had five fingers on my hand and I created a controller one for each one of those, okay, that's five attributes. I also may want to do this, right, on my characters because why not? so they can open and close their hand like that. I also may have some certain symbols that I want the hand to eventually be able to get into. Um, let's pretend that I created a sign language robot and I had the entire alphabet of sign language I wanted to program in there. I can go to each one of those attributes and program in what each letter would be. And I can just basically use sliders to make my hand do all of these different things, okay? Um, so it's super powerful because whatever items you want to move, you can literally just grab them and group them into a controller, okay? Um, if I go to add attribute for this and I say uh, finger spread, there we go, same values. I'm going to reset these to zero. I'm going to reload my driver because I added something to it. I'm going to add in all three of these into my driven. 
and I'll be using rotate Z and finger spread. Okay, so I set a key on that. I go to my arrow, I set finger spread to 10. And spread that one out, spread this one out, and I give this one a little bit of wiggle one way or the other. And then when I go to negative 10, I'm just gonna bunch these together. So this one will come in. This one will um, go that way. Okay, and then I key it again. Okay, so now I have this. So I can control the finger spreading. And I can also control the middle the fingers also moving around. Okay. So that's what's awesome about set driven. I didn't have to do any programming. That's another way we can do stuff is writing expressions, connecting things together. Uh, we can use connection editor. We can use the hyper um, shade, hypergraph. Uh, we can use a lot of different things to create all these different controls. This is the most versatile because it requires no extra stuff. It literally is. I want it to be here at this value, here at this value, and here at that value, and it will change all of those things. When, if you look at the um, Game of Thrones one now, you'll notice that the, the columns that come out, they go up and then they come back down. That's how I did that was I animated them to go up past the value and then come back to the resting value. So it looks like it's more of like a wave as opposed to them just shooting straight up, okay? Um, now, I said that there's no values down here in the keyframe in the, in the uh, timeline. All of them live inside of this. So if by some mistake you click the wrong button or whatever, I can go to the graph editor and I can actually see each one of those. So here's left pinky base. Here's what that rotate Y is doing. Here is the Y, which is the bending of that. Here is rotate Z. This is it going side to side. Okay. Um, it used to actually show what it was being controlled by. That must be a new feature of Maya to just hide stuff from you. Uh, view, frame, buffer, result. Nope. Yeah, whatever, Maya. Um, it used to say, you know, this is connected to something else. I don't know why it doesn't anymore. Whatever. We'll figure it out. All right. Um, so you can still tweak this. So I can tweak it like that or whatever. Okay. And this is actually how I did the... Um, the castle one is I just went into each one of those graphs and just moved it down. That way it does go past it and then comes back to it. Okay, so again, makes your it makes your life a lot easier. Um, when we get into actual character animation, there are so many controls over the entire body in order to get it to do what we need. This is the best way to do it. Okay. Um, so now if I move this around, you'll see um, the wrist is staying locked in position because of that IK handle. Uh, I can also grab this, move this around, and I can grab these, okay, very easily, okay? Much more easily than what I did before when I just grabbed all the geometry and then hit S and then moved it and then hit S and tried to rearrange everything. This is the way you want to rig stuff, okay? Um, a professional rig takes years and years to do your first one because there's so much stuff not only just this kind of stuff but there's also basically you're creating three different rigs for a character tying them all together with expressions and scripts and all this other stuff forget it okay um, now just to give you i don't i don't need to save that but i'm going to i guess i'll delete that later um, just to give you a um, idea of what a better looking rig looks like maya has a content browser if you're not familiar with this, this is like free stuff that comes with it. If you want to play with sculpting, that's where the stuff is. Um, they have a biped. I'm going to grab. Uh, burn, 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 burn. What's the name? I'm going to grab this alien guy. Let's drag him in. There it goes. Okay. So he comes in at uh, full scale. There he is. And they also have under the rigging. A quick rig and what this is going to do is when I click auto rig it's gonna go through and find out where his wrist is where his shoulders are his hips his legs arms everything 
and it's going to create controls for them. Okay, it only works for certain things. It doesn't work for everything. If I just threw a bunch of objects together and say quick rig, it has no idea what I'm even talking about. Bam, done. Okay, and you'll even see it goes so far as to do the wrist, but does not do the fingers. So you'll see there's no controls here for the fingers because there's no bones going down those. Um, and it also makes this little thing, which is kind of nice, um, it allows you to quickly grab stuff in here to move it around. But look at how easy um, they've actually made it to be able to rig a whole character. Okay, so here's the controls for just this wrist. If I go to the channel box, um, you'll see all the different stuff that they've actually added to it. Um, there's also an elbow controller, so we can control which way the elbow is pointing. Because obviously if my character has his hand here, where is the elbow pointing? We want to be able to control that separately. Um, there's hip controllers. Uh, there's individual leg controllers and even like toe controllers like this one. Okay. Um, controllers, yep, there we go. This one. Okay, not really anything major up here. Sweet. Okay. So just so you can see what a okay rig looks like, that's what that one looks like. Uh, when we get into our character stuff, you'll see one that is fully blown, like every single thing you hopefully want to control in a character, you can. Um, some of them are not very good. You'll find out when you get to that point. Uh, so we're going to have two rigging assignments. It'll be this hard one, which is the Pokemac thing. Um, you're going to rig it, and then you're going to create a little animation showing off its controls. However you want to show it off. You want to make a little scene, make a little scene. Just keep in mind that we do have a time limit of this is almost October mm -hmm. and we go till December-ish and we still have a bunch of other stuff we need to do. Um, so basically these assignments are meant to be like three weeks to work on. Okay, these two assignments. Um, so don't waste too much time on them. Okay. Any questions? Um, also, 